Howdy there, welcome to Algebra 1 CST release question number 57. It says if x squared is added to x, the sum is 42. Which of the following could be the value of x? And so let's make an equation out of this statement first, this sentence. We have if x squared is added to, so that plus x, it says the sum is or equals 42. So this is a valid equation based on the first sentence that's given to me. Now I could subtract 42 from both sides, and I'd be left with this. You might say, well, why are you doing this, Mr. Wagner? I don't see where you're going with this. Oh, okay, so if you factor out, or if you do this, you can factor out this side. Since it's set equal to zero, you can do something like this now. I hope you recognize that, at least if you've taken an Algebra 1 class. If you're just seeing these for the first time to get an idea of what Algebra 1 is all about, you probably didn't know that, but that's fine. Uh, so now we've got something where you have a 1, an invisible 1 in front of the squared, the variable squared part. Then you can just write the x and the x right there. You can think about, and again, remember, it's like an invisible 1 here. Same thing here, an invisible 1 there. We're looking for what numbers would multiply to this last coefficient, this last number, and would add to this coefficient, this number. I guess this is a, really isn't a coefficient, it's just a constant term, but this is a coefficient of 1. And so you're looking for numbers that have a product, again, of 42, and a sum of positive 1, negative 42, a sum of positive 1. And so what's the combination going to be? I know 6 and 7 are going to multiply together to get 42. So if I put a 6 here and a 7 here, one of them has to be negative, though, to get a negative 42. Which one should be negative? Well, remember, you want to sum a positive 1, so the smaller number should be the negative number. Negative 6 times 7 gives you 42. Negative 42. Negative 6 plus 7 gives you positive 1. So we can fill in our, our blanks now with a negative 6 and a positive 7. From there, what you're really saying here is that you can have this term or this binomial times this one equal to zero excuse me <laughs> pardon me hmm. so x minus 6 x plus 7 you can have this term if this term this binomial factor was equal to zero zero would become this whole thing in parentheses times it wouldn't matter what you had here in parentheses because zero times whatever this is would still be zero the zero product property is kind of what a lot of books will refer to this as. You could also have this factor equal to zero. If x plus seven altogether was zero, this whole set of parentheses would be zero, and zero times, who cares what that is now, zero times whatever that is would still equal zero. So really you have two equations here that can give you an answer. You can have x minus six could be equal to zero, because that would make this whole thing zero, which would make this times that still equal to zero, you could have x plus seven equal to zero. And so now we just need to solve both of these for x. A lot of you are probably going to get very good if you're not good already at ones like this. You can, I think, very simply see that six makes the left factor zero and negative seven makes the right factor equal to zero. But if you're not seeing that or if you just like to do things uh, the, the full way out, you can do something like this and see that yes in fact x could equal 6 or x could equal negative 7 so it looks like they're trying to trick you a little bit here they gave you negative 6 and negative 7 but only negative 7 is actually there the positive 6 that's not a value here so we're not going to use that one so it's negative 7 that's a possibility both of these are possibilities if you plug your numbers back in up here negative 7 squared is 49 minus 7 would be 42 6 squared is 36, plus 6 would be 42 as well. So that's a quick check, mental check of our answers. We know we did the right thing, and then we know that 57 has to be A based on what we did.